Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. Today we're going to be covering how to pad a plunger head as part of the whole uh, simple springers tip series, as it were. What you're going to need for materials, obviously you're going to need your plunger with the plunger head. You're going to need some uh, craft foam. I'm going to be using quarter inch craft foam. It's cheap, it can be gotten at pretty much any craft shop, Joann's, Michael's, wherever. Uh, you could also use thinner stuff if you wanted to, but I prefer the quarter inch. And then you're going to need some glue and a pair of scissors. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a very simple process. All you need to do is figure out exactly how big you need your um, bit of foam to be. You can just press, I don't know if you can see that, but you can just press the plunger head into the foam and it will give you a rough idea of the size. Uh, you're going to want to cut it a little bit smaller, of course, so that it doesn't uh, cause any friction with the plunger tube. Once you have your little disc of foam cut out, make sure that it is, in fact, smaller than the plunger head and trim as needed. There we go. Then you take your glue. I'm just using uh, Gorilla Super Glue because I like it. It dries very fast. It works very well on both foam and plastic. I've yet to have a plunger head come off. Glue it on, add a little pressure. And it should set practically instantly, uh, which is why I like this stuff so much. Now, in some plunger heads that don't screw off, that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. This was one of the ones that does screw off, and fortunately, the foam is light enough that you can actually just use a screwdriver and just put a hole right in it. And then you can still screw the plunger head off without having to, you know, drill a, a special hole for it. You can just use the screwdriver. So you can still get the plunger head off for maintenance and just screw it right back on again. You could drill a hole or punch a hole. I just... Screwdriver works well enough. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it for padding the plunger head. You can use other materials. You could use rubber or you could use different kinds of foam. I like this craft foam. It's cheap. It's easy. It works. It definitely adds a little bit of protection from the force of a heavy spring um, firing from a blaster that does not have an AR in it. Um, the other option is on some blasters uh, you can actually take the plunger tube assembly apart. Uh, this one, this top cap is solvent welded on but it's not on all blasters and if you can get that section off then you'd be able to glue directly to that center uh, area which is where the plunger actually hits and you could pad that instead or as well if you felt like it. You could do thin foam on both. Um, I will often pad plunger heads or add a, even a little extra padding um, to avoid spring rattle sometimes because if the for whatever reason the catch mechanism is such that the only way you can get K26 in there is to cut it shorter than the original you can add padding to the plunger head to make up the difference and avoid that irritating rattle sound of a loose spring in the plunger tube. So um, that does work. You definitely, I've always had to do it on night finders when you put a number 55 spring in. The number 55 spring is heavier than K26 and is lovely, but it's just a little bit too short. Um, you don't have to cut it at all. You can just put it in stock the length that it comes from, um, I think, it's both Ace and Fastenal sell it, um, but it is just a little too short, and as a result, you get some spring rattle, but if you pad the plunger head, which is a good idea anyway, then it alleviates that particular problem. So, that pretty much covers it for uh, plunger head padding. It's a very, very good idea uh, if you're doing a spring upgrade, and it is all but necessary if you're going to be uh, taking out the AR uh, to increase the life of the blaster to keep it from breaking itself. Uh, some of the newer plunger heads are actually already padded or at least have a little bit of a rubber gasket or ring that kind of vaguely adds as a plunger. I will actually usually augment it with this kind of a padding as well just because it doesn't cost anything and is uh, better than having your blaster break. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. If you have requests for little tip guides you would like to see, go ahead and put those in. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing one more on uh, 
simple springer tips. I'll probably cover uh, catch springs next episode. And then I'm going to be going into flywheel blaster mods. So I'll have an episode on soldering motors and installing flywheels and installing motors and rewiring switches and all of that uh, as an entire series. And then I will probably then go into a series on integrations. So look forward to that. If you have anything else you'd like to see, feel free to ask. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>